Airbnb, short-term rentals, VRBO, is that one of them? Uh, N-O. N-O? I don't know. VRBO, Airbnb, are they any good for real estate investors? That's today's show, let's dive into it. Here we are at our very first rental property. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton Morris. I'm Natalie Morris. Welcome to the Investing in Real Estate Show where we help you build financial intelligence and help you build financial freedom with buy and hold real estate. You know, Natalie and I have been investing in real estate for a number of years. We've done thousands of deals now and we've seen a lot. It's like that Amazing farmer's- Amazing because we're so young. It's like that farmer's commercial. We've seen a lot. I know. how do we get that done? I don't know. this young age of ours. Right, we're not that young. I saw I saw recently online someone saying, hey, welcome to the 30 under 30. And it was like, if you've worked so hard in your 20s that you've made it to the 30 <laughs> under 30s list, congratulations. I'm like, I'm in my 40s and I feel a little older. But hey, we have done short-term rentals in the investing in real estate game. We have. We've, we know a thing or two about it. We know some of the big pitfalls to watch out for. And first of all, we're just going to talk about what they are, the short-term rental game. You could also call them vacation rentals. And then we'll give you our pros and cons list because Natalie's biting her tongue right now because she has some big cons. Oh, I got some it. stories. Yeah, we got some stories. So first of all, short-term rentals, right? The idea of a short-term rental is attractive for a lot of people people who think that you're going to get higher income because you're turning it over for a week. You know, beach rentals, mm -hmm. people are moving in and out and shaking and baking um, and you're getting in with the cleaning crew and then you're putting a new tenant in there right away for the next week. Right. It's attractive, right? And you can make a lot of money if you do it correctly and you actually have an area where it can, where you can actually attract a lot of tenants on a regular basis, right? Right. I think that the best way to make money in this type of real estate investment is inherit a property. <laughs> right. I mean, that's really it. Like we've really looked into buying into these vacation towns and every single time Clayton tries to get me to do it, I'm a hard no on this. So either you find off market deals. Um, it's just so hard to find like a beautiful beach house for you know a discounted price that then you can make money back on. Um, I really think that the only stories that I've heard these really succeeding is inherited properties like our friend in Rehoboth Beach who mm -hmm. in inherited this because her husband's father was a big real estate developer um, in that town before it was all built out. And they kept this plot of land for themselves, kept one of the condos for their family, and they make a ton of money uh, renting it out, but it's an inherited property that was purchased back in the 60s, the right. land. So it needs a lot of work and it does need upkeep. And of course, you're dealing with the constant turnover. So let's get, we'll get in the pros and cons in a second, but just at a high level, if you think about some of the areas where this could be successful, I've certainly heard from experts who've done vacation rentals and they, they warn, they, they always put up like a warning before they start talking about it because yeah. it's a tricky thing. And the reason it's tricky is because you've got to think about the seasonality. You've got to think about the vacancy rate. And if you're dealing with a property in like a Rehoboth Beach, you're going to have a huge swath of time where that house is sitting vacant. In fact, speaking to our friend who runs that 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 property, she said, oh yeah, there'll be periods, you know, through like the holidays up until like March. So she's looking like three, four months of vacancy in that property with no one there. You have to then consider, well, who's going to keep the heat on, make sure pipes don't freeze, right. other elements yeah. about the electricity in the property that you're footing the bill for. Also, in a lot of vacation markets, of course, you're dealing with homeowners associations and stuff. So again, I keep going in the pros and cons list, but let's take a step back. Think about a place like Costa Rica, okay? Here, honestly, is a spot where you could probably make some money if you're savvy enough having a townhouse in a place like Costa Rica on a street not too far from the beach in somewhat new construction where there are, you own like two or three or four of them in a row, okay? You own a few of them in a row. You have a service that you trust that can go in and then turn them over with a cleaning crew. You're not paying a homeowners association and you're also getting the seasonality because it's nice all year round. So that's where you could really make a strong play for a, a vacation rental or a, you know an Airbnb. But now let's dive into some of the, the 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 pros and cons more explicitly. Like if we had a we had a list one side or the other. I mean that's like very explicit. Like you could make money in Costa Rica if well, you had that. a whole infrastructure. Well, that's, that's like well, yes, yes, okay, yes. But well, look, but let's to be fair, 
You and I have done a lot in the rental real estate business that we there's a lot of infrastructure there too. We have insurance on our properties. We have a property management team. We have um, we have right. our tax team. So, so there under is some the infrastructure. right circumstances, right? But okay, but I have crunched these numbers so hard on all of these types of investments. Number one, the insurance for a rental is very expensive. So we have a cabin up in the Pennsylvania mountains that we rented out on Airbnb for a short amount of time. And there's a reason there's a short amount of time and we're going to tell you. So the going rate, we actually thought, well, wow, that's great. People are willing to pay up to $300 a night for this ski cabin because it's in a desirable area. That's why we wanted it, right? And so we thought, oh, we're gonna make a lot of money. It will pay our mortgage on this and it's gonna be wonderful. Well, I called my insurance agent and she said, okay, but here's your insurance bill now if you're putting tenants in it. I was like, what? Okay, that's a lot, but we probably still could make that money back. And then you go into the expenses of uh, making sure a cleaning crew comes after every single turnover. So every time that person leaves, um, you know, and then you come down to the expenses of like keeping certain things in the house, like olive oil, butter, spices. People don't like to bring that stuff themselves. That's a good point. They're fine with bringing like bacon and wine, and people left and milk. the cheapest vodka in our house. We inherited all kinds of utter crap alcohol. No, so, you know, um, and it's not so hard not to judge people by what's left in your fridge. You're like, who eats this? Um, but because this was yeah. a space that was like, I was judging them by the wine. Yeah. Oh, no, no, not the wine, the, uh, the, the beer. So I, you know, I like good beer, you know, I think I like, you know, a good dogfish That's pale right. ale. We did have like canned but there was like, light. There was like, no, it was like the Bud Light lime or, you know, <laughs> stuff like that, which, you know, whatever, you know, to each their own. But someone's like, going to be really offended that we said that I about know. their beer of choice, but I'm sorry. No, it's like when someone served, uh, remember we were at our, our brother-in-law's place and he's like, would you like a beer? And I'm like, what do you have? He's like, oh, I've got Coors Light. And I said, yes, I said I would like a beer, <laughs> not, not that, which is not real beer. Anyway, um, your your point this is- This episode brought to you by Coors Light. Right. Tap the Rockies. So, no, no. In this house, you have to have, you have to really think, I didn't think about that. That's a great point. But the things you have, you're furnishing the house, okay? So you've got to have, you know, you've got to have the bed. You've got to have the sleeper couch. You've got to have the bookshelf that looks nice. And then you also have to think about like, okay, is this a place that I'm ever going to use? And there's a lot of considerations here. So we have a lot of people that watch this show and who write to us and say to you know, well, I have this house. It's like a vacation house. We're thinking about Airbnb it or renting it out. And you, you, you've got to start thinking about, okay, I've got to now get a closet with a key and unlock and put things away in that closet that I don't want other people to have access right. to, right? Some private things, whatever your house documents or whatever. That's going to be behind closed doors that you people can't get into. You're going to have to have you know spices, flatware. You're going to have to have dishes, glasses, mm -hmm. wine glasses, bottle openers. You're going to have to make sure the house is furnished, right, and appealing. And then when you're out of like the olive oil and you live two hours away, well, I'm not going to drive up there just to give somebody olive oil, right? Mm -hmm. um, that kind of stuff's annoying. Toilet paper, you have to have at least a little bit for them to show up with, and then like prepare them. There's also it took a lot of time. To to correspond with people, and I did not like that. Um, I prefer having. What just do you mean? So back that, and forth, back and forth on the like Airbnb service. Yeah, right. So s someone would ask, "Does this have a high chair?" You know, and I'm like, "It says it has a high chair." Okay, but you know, is it? There's, is there an infant adapter? And then, oh, how close are the, are we to the ski resort? And where can I get ski rental? Like, you have to be a concierge. I am not the kind of person that likes that. Right. I so don't now, want to do that. Now I come back to the infrastructure point. Right. Now, so let's go back to my Costa Rica example. So if you've got four townhouses that you bought for a song in Costa Rica on a nice little street near the beach, and you've got a team in place that handles these questions, right. that answers these questions on Airbnb, answers the olive oil, ridiculous and... questions that sh are right there written up in the description. Right. We also used an August lock and then sometimes like someone just couldn't figure that out, you know, so that that's where you uh, give access to someone's phone and then it lock, it unlocks and 
Sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. So then you get a call late at night when someone shows up late. Also in the cabin, we had to have snow removal done. Um, all of this stuff was just, it was a lot. So we were thinking about, because during this the winter, okay, well, is Dan the snowplow guy going to be there before the next tenants arrive? Right. You know, and is Carol, the cleaning crew, and her cleaning crew going to be there between and making sure that she can get down the driveway? So there's a lot to consider with this, and not to mention the damage to the property. So we had curtains ripped off the wall like the the, the you know the the, uh, the studs were attached to the wall got ripped out um they we had a, the couch they broke the couch uh -huh. they they did some other things and natalie's favorite of the, all time the picnic table was somehow collapsed in the middle like how do you even do that did they jump off the deck into the picnic table or i'm not sure um and then there was another one which i actually posted on twitter and at replied airbnb because I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm offended by it. So I, I went up to the printer. No, no, no. I'm, you were not even there. I thought it was you. And mm -hmm. I texted you and I said, did you do this? So I was <laughs> just like doing some work oh, in the right. office. And then I printed something on a paper page that was like 10 sheets down, you know, not at the top of the printer stack. And someone had dick picked. Like they just, it wasn't, thankfully they didn't take a picture of their own junk and print it. <laughs> That would have been worse. Um, they hand drew it with some like really fun little it, like it, cartoon it, bubbles coming out of said phallus. Yeah. So it was I very, was, it was wondering, very I was like, Clayton, did you do this? And I texted it to him because you were at work. And he was like, no, I did not. And so I had no way of knowing which tenant had done this because we had already had like six or seven vacation rentals in that season. So there was no way to know who did this. And I, I'm going to be honest with you, the cleaning lady, when we told her we're going to start turning this over on Airbnb, she's like, rent only to families, only older people above 25 with kids don't rent, you know, to young people. Well, obviously that's illegal. They're protected, like age is a protected class. You can't do it. But I see now why she said that because we had to replace all of this furniture and all of this damage to our house, not to mention get rid of gross junk groceries that I did not want in yeah. my house. And, and, Bud, Light, and Bud Light Lime. And pay the extra insurance on top of it. So in the end, when I ran the numbers, we actually didn't make money. And this is on a house that we got years ago. Our mortgage is very low. It should be easy to cover that mortgage but it wasn't. Um, now, there are some tax advantages to doing this though. If you can stomach it, and for us a lot of times we thought, well, like this is our private place. This is a place we love. We never intended to make money on it. And to see it kind of violated like this was just too much for us emotionally and we shut it down. Right, but if you're buying the place with the purpose of turning it into a vacation rental from the start, you have right. no vested interest in living there yourself. You're or you want to live there part of the year. This is the big point that Tom Wheelwright makes, that Garrett Sutton makes. Invest somewhere that you would like to go every now and again, then you're gonna make money on it because every time you go is a tax write-off, right? But don't invest somewhere that like it's your personal sanctuary and think also it will make money. Those two things just don't go together and we learn that the hard way. Yeah, it almost never works. It really almost never works. Um, so think about those things and the damage and the things you have to pay for in order to get the house up and running again. Also take into account the HOA, okay? This is something people don't think about. The Homeowners Association, you just think that that's just a sunk cost. It's not. It affects your bottom line. It affects your ROI. And so when I'm talking about someplace like Costa Rica, I'm saying that because they don't have a homeowners association, right? <laughs> There's not, that doesn't exist. Um, and so when you go into- How do you know that? They might. These no, condos might have- No, they don't. I'm telling you. When you go into certain areas like that- You have never even been to Costa Rica. In my dreams, I have. <laughs> I happen to know, based on research, that these areas where you're not dealing with a costly HOA. But like, think about Florida, for instance, right? You can't get away from homeowners associations in Florida. They are everywhere. They're, yeah. they're everywhere even in single family residences in Florida, right? If you're around a, a lake there, you're probably in a homeowners association. All they do is mow the grass, but you're still, that's a sunk cost into your uh, short term rental. So think about it. Also be sure to think about how you, like how much time you plan to spend in that property. Again, are you going to buy a place in Hawaii or Rehoboth Beach where you know every August you're going to be there. That's prime season, right? 
So now you're losing out on thousands of dollars in rental income during that August window right. because you want to hang out with your family there. Now, in Garrett Sutton's awesome book, Loopholes of Real Estate, he goes through four different scenarios of vacant vacation home ownership that will provide you with various levels of tax advantage. Um, and it has to do with the number of days you and your family are there and the number of hours you spend working on that property. So please don't do this without reading that book. That's an amazing resource. It's a huge chapter. It's near the beginning of the book um, because you need to know how much you can take advantage of it and how much it affects you for your taxes. Right. So there you go. Short-term rentals for us, not a fan. But like in all forms of real estate investing, yes, you can make money if you know what you're doing and you've spent the time, you've gone through the process, you probably had your trials and errors and tribulations. It's going to happen. It's going to happen more with short-term uh, rentals because you have more tenants. Now, also, I want to say this like, because I don't want to oh, just dump oh, on this and say like, these are all the crappy things. No, I was about to say one thing. Hold on. Let me finish my thought because... Okay. Because... If you, to your point about in, uh, renting to families, okay, yeah, smart, but also another thing what we learned from our friends in Rehoboth and other places that have vacation rentals is try to do it for a month at a time. You can do short-term rentals for a month at a time. Right. You set the minimum number of days on these sites. You can say no two-day rentals. Um, so no one can come for like a romantic weekend or... Uh, even worse, like bachelor a frat, party. Yeah, we, like a frat party. Yeah, that's what you do not want. Fraternities are not a protected class. So you are not legally <laughs> required to rent your place to a fraternity. Yeah, no frat bros. All right, so what were you going to say? I interrupted you as you were wrapping this up. I don't even remember now. Good. So that's going to do it for today's episode on investing in short-term rentals. We are not a fan, but we want you to build financial intelligence. So we hope you will learn from our experiences. We would love to hear your experiences, though, with short-term rentals. So leave a comment in the description. Let us know your thoughts and share this with a friend. If you haven't already picked up our cheat sheet, it's the Freedom Number Cheat Sheet. You can download it for free. It'll help you figure out how many rental properties it would take you to be financially free. We'll see you next time here on The Big Show. Bye, everyone.